I don't mind the, the ladyboy jokes. Uh, it does get old. <laughs> and the longer you stay in Thailand, the more you will start to see that for yourself. Vigor Steve here. You guys asked for it. I see this topic plastered all over the comment section the last couple of days. So here we are. We're going to talk about ladyboys. That's right. You guys requested it, so we're going to address it. How many ladyboys are there in Thailand? And if you go by the comment section, you would assume that all women in Thailand are ladyboys, which can't be further from the truth. So let's discuss that in this video. But before we get into it, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you came here hoping to subscribe to a channel talking about ladyboys, I'm sorry, this is a channel for bodybuilding. So that's basically the opposite end of the spectrum, even though there's a ton of similarities between ladyboys and bodybuilders. I'm sure I'm getting a ton of dislikes for the statement alone. Just stick with me. Let me explain. I know you guys are all, uh, you know, a little bit paranoid and potentially a little bit homophobic. Um, maybe I can change your mind, not to the point that you're going to be interested in ladyboys, but hey, Ladyboys are people too with similar aspirations as bodybuilders. Just keep an open mind, okay? Because in Thailand, there are some ladyboys here and there. And from my interaction with the ladyboys that I've talked to over the last couple of years, all of my interactions have been positive. I think that the phenomenon and the concept of ladyboys is generally accepted here in Thailand. That's why it seems to be a little bit more out in the open compared to some of the other countries that I've visited here in Asia and Europe, where it seems to be happening mostly behind closed doors. So in Thailand, it's out in the open, especially in uh, tourist areas, because it seems that a lot of the ladyboys are interested in foreigners, but there's also a huge market for ladyboys here in Thailand. And it's mostly in the true entertainment, like prop, not, not sexual entertainment, but like a cabaret, for example, or they have um, hostess bars with purely ladyboys catering towards the Thais. So it really depends on what the lady boys are interested in, where they're going to end up with, because right, there's a multitude of things that they could be doing. Some of them are TV hosts, and you would not be able to tell. There's lists on Thailand online with the most popular, most famous lady boys. And, and myself and many of you guys would not be able to tell. They're very good at what they're doing, similar to how an IFB pro is very good at what they're doing, trying to attain peak muscularity, these ladyboys are trying to attain peak femininity. So in that sense, we're very, very similar. The process is, of course, from, well, we start as men and bodybuilders end up as very, very muscular men. And well, the, the women that were born men, but don't identify as men, they end up as a very feminine woman, which is also a lengthy transition with surgery, hormonal treatments, uh, the hair laser therapy, right? <laughs> Uh, boob implants, uh, butt implants, perhaps. There's, uh, well, um, we can go on, right? The reconstructive surgery of the vagina. There's a lot of things that in, are involved that are considered to be extreme. And it, we, in bodybuilding, we do the same extreme stuff. Really, they will be a different. We do a very extreme stuff. Bodybuilders do very extreme lifting, drug protocols, uh, also laser, uh, laser hair removal, right? And, and ladyboys in that sense do also very extreme modifications to their body to achieve this peak femininity that they're after. So here in Thailand, you might see ladyboys walking around a little bit more commonly, but it's not as much as you guys make it out to be in the comment section. It's incredibly unlikely that when you interact with women, that they end up being ladyboys. The very large majority of the women you're going to meet, whether that's at the BTS station or in the gym, well, because most uh, ladyboys don't go to the gym. We do have a ladyboy working behind the counter at Muscle Factory. Incredibly friendly. A lot of you will probably not recognize which one of the girls behind the counter of the Muscle Factory is a ladyboy. And if you do, you don't need to remind her. Um, I'm sure she's consciously aware of the changes which occurred over her lifetime. It's, it's very unlikely that you're going to interact with ladyboys unless you're actively seeking that out or you're finding yourself in a situation where uh, ladyboys uh, gravitate to, and it's usually in the tourist slash entertainment areas. 
Let's discuss what the similarities are between ladyboys and bodybuilders. And we already alluded to it a little bit earlier in this video. But again, there's a lot of similarities, right? We all start from a certain point that we're perhaps not happy with. You are handed certain cards upon birth. And then as you get older, the same starting point starts to go apart. Now, in the case of bodybuilding, we want to attain insane muscularity, maybe because we were bullied when we were younger, or we found the image of insane muscularity appealing because we grew up with He-Man or other cartoons or comic books, anime in the form of uh, Fist of the North Star, the best anime known to man, or you watch Pumping Iron or whatever else, right? you get inspired to change your physique. And then as you go through the process, at one point you might start to result to pharmacology to take your physique to the next level. And ladyboys are no different in this sense. They were handed certain cards. They didn't agree with those cards. They were handed the body of a man and they felt like a woman. Now, it will take some time before you're financially secure enough or old enough to make that decision to make that transition from a male body that you were handed to a female body that you want to have. So some women do that at the age of 12, some at 15, some at 18, some at well, 40 years old, right? It's, Again, if you want to make a change, it's never too late, but it's going to take a significant amount of money and perhaps pharmacology and surgery to make those changes happen. And it doesn't happen overnight, just like becoming a bodybuilder doesn't happen overnight. It might take years to even decades. And some of the ladyboys undergo these procedures for decades until they finally land that physique and emotional maturity that comes along with changing your physique to something that you want to aspire like. Um, right until the point that they're happy. So when they're ladyboys, to the point nobody recognizes them being a ladyboy, they just look like a woman, act like a woman, um, think like a woman, etc. Right? It's all conditioned over time. If you then insult them, saying that they're a man in a woman's dress, right, or, or a ladyboy even, even so, some of those girls, and they get offended. If you mention that they're a ladyboy, you recognize that, right, they might have started off life differently. And it's the same as bodybuilders, man. You, right, you absolutely nasty, shredded hard. You put in so much effort to grow every body part and show up nasty, hard, dense, and then somebody arrived, your, your dude, your calves are subpar. It's just like a stabby comment that doesn't go over well, right? And it, we, we all get offended like this. And, and so maybe you guys have a little bit better understanding now that right, if you're a bodybuilder or you're, you're going down an avenue where you need the utmost dedication and financial um, investment to really excel at what you're trying to do, you don't want the stabby comments where all of your hard work is undone. And even calling a woman a ladyboy might be the same stabby comment that you would get as a bodybuilder about right, your lower back, your glutes are not in shape. <laughs> Even though you've tried everything and your glutes are indeed in shape, it just didn't show well in a picture because this picture was not taken at the right time in between transitioning of poses. Right? And his glutes, on one picture, his glutes are not in shape. Dude, I didn't even flex yet, for example, right? So this is something you have to keep in mind. Ladyboys, just like everybody else, are people too with things they want out of life and things they don't want to hear. <laughs> just like bodybuilders. Um, and we don't want to hear those stabby remarks either. I will forewarn you guys, right? Ladyboys would love to be respected and treated nicely, just like everybody else. So if you mistreat them, um, yeah, you might get uh, harassed. And I've seen that happen a couple times in Patia, not in Phuket so much, or in Bangkok, but in Patia, right? It's a, it's a tourist town. A lot of fresh tourists come in. They don't really understand the culture. They can be a little bit rude or condescending, right? They don't understand the concept of uh, being a ladyboy and how much effort it takes to make the transition. So they're, um, right? they might offend them and that usually turns sour. So right? whatever happens, if you do interact with a ladyboy and, and you don't feel comfortable with it, just smile, be nice, move on. Don't do anything stupid where you are on the short end of the stick of the ramifications because, well, ladyboys are generally not alone. And if you offend one of them, you might inf offend the entire group and <laughs> that usually doesn't end well and will be a while before the tourist police is there to break it up. Now, when it comes to the pharmacology, even though pharmacology is involved, the ph pharmacology is almost the opposite. 
right? unless you're doing a nandrolone-only cycle with an injectable estradiol base right? to fulfill uh, the, the, the physiological functions of estradiol. Um, ladyboys obviously take estradiol at much higher amounts. I'm not exactly sure what the protocols are because from the ladyboys that I've talked to over the last couple of years, it seems to be quite different. You know, some have their unique protocol, just like bodybuilders have their unique protocol, but it mostly revolves about female hormones. So some of them might use um, injectable estrogens, which are over the counter here in Thailand and actually quite popular. So you have uh, estradiol valorate or estradiol benzoate. Those are being injected at several milligrams, a couple times per week. Or estradiol cream, which is used to grow breast tissue. Some of them use oral micronized progesterone or injectable progesterone even. Again, it will completely downregulate the HPTA because it's used as a contraceptive. Um, well, I'm not going to go into those details, but yeah, I mean, human physiology tend to change quite a bit that way. So whereas bodybuilders subject themselves to high dosages of androgens, Lady boys subjecting themselves to higher dosages of female hormones, estrogens, and progesterones, physiology changes to the point they become either non-functional or they need they do the surgery, right? Which is in Thailand has mastered that surgery, from what I understand. And it's quite affordable. I mean, a lot of people from Brazil, America, all over the world, they fly to Thailand to get these uh, sex changes uh, done. And it's, uh, it's quite popular here. They're, they're some of the most prominent doctors are apparently in Thailand. Then they do schedule that with a breast augmentation, maybe rhinoplasty, uh, shaving of the jaw, the Adam's apple, right? There's a ton of surgery that uh, takes place before some of the lady boys 100% identify as a woman and are pleased with their appearance. And again, it's the same trajectory as bodybuilders. It takes years. And, and multiple cycles and, and maybe, you know, altering your physiology, uh, physiology a little bit to the point that they actually peak. And it, I think if you were to talk with 10 ladyboys, you would get different responses, different uh, drug protocols, different reasons why they transitioned, or maybe even say like the fake natties in bodybuilding, that they were born as a woman and never had to undergo any surgery or breast augmentation, or a hormonal therapy, or sex change to begin with, right? You gotta leave them in their peace and respect them for their decisions because, um, well, from what I see, it's quite a lengthy process as it is with bodybuilding. Okay, I think we've gone on way too long. Uh, again, guys, I don't mind the, the ladyboy jokes. Uh, it does get old. <laughs> and the longer you stay in Thailand, the more you will start to see that for yourself. Most of the women that you'll interact with will just be a good old regular woman. There are no real risks um, of uh, meeting ladyboys unless you want to. And if you do meet a ladyboy out in the club or a go-go bar or out on the street, give yourself some time, like a 10-minute conversation, because you might find a lot of similarities between you and this woman wanting to reach a peak physical shape of um, the ideal that you're interested in, so to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're looking for the most comprehensive guides to bodybuilding pharmacology, you can find the eBooks on my website, vigorsteve.com slash shop. Personalized advice always available through consultations. You can find the rates in the consultations section. Follow me on Instagram at vigorsteve. Front double bicep for the vigorous crew you guys know what to do much appreciated much love thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video which is going to be about bodybuilding see you guys then <laughs>